friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Got another project that I need to get started on. This one's been sitting in the shop since, well, I don't know when. <laughs> it doesn't have a date on the tag on this one. But I have not opened the case yet. It's a guitar. And according to the little tag, it's a Regal guitar. So let's uh, see if, if it really is a Regal guitar. Looks like it is to me. I have not read anything from the customer yet, so I don't know what the problem is with it. Let's just give it a quick once over and see if we can discover any problems. First thing I always look at on a guitar is how flat the top is. This part here actually looks pretty good, which is usually where the problem is. But this prop from here up don't look so good. And that's unusual. That's not where you normally see the problem. This is, you know, I'm exaggerating, but this is dished under here. This is peaked up right here. In other words, if you were skiing, you'd be going uphill right here. From here to up. Same way here. It's, I don't know if you can see that arch. There's an arch, kind of like an arch there in the, in the soundboard. So right now I can tell you that's a problem. The second thing I see now that after I've looked at the top, you know, which I can diagnose that issue, what's that, what's that going to tell you? Well, I would say probably going to have action problems because the top ain't flat. And sure enough, looking down it, uh, yeah, you could throw a Pekingese poodle under here. I don't know what his complaint is yet. You can see some pretty good wear around here. Looks like the, there's been some binding work done on it, I can tell right in here for sure. I would even say maybe the top's been off of it. In fact, I would almost guarantee the top's been off of it, just looking at it here. Um, uh, I don't know. Kind of feels that way about the back too. <laughs> it's had some kind of work done to it. I'm not really sure what yet. I'd almost have to guarantee the top's been off. The back almost looks the same, which makes me wonder, maybe neither one of them's been off if they both look the same, but it's not factory standard, I would say. You know, it looks like there's been something happened. It looks like there's a little line here in the heel of the neck, which could indicate a problem with the neck, possibly. I don't feel it moving. I'm kind of putting a little pressure on the neck. I don't feel anything moving there, but it does look a little weird. The fretboard itself is reasonable. It doesn't look bad. Okay, so those are my, you know, quick assessments just looking at it. Let me read what the customer has to say, and I'll come right back and tell you what he's got to say. My friends, I kind of hit the nail on the head pretty much with everything I said. I'm not sure the top has been removed or the back has been removed. It sounds like he has cleaned up the binding himself and scraped the binding and things, and that's probably why it looks like it's been removed. He fixed a lot of cracks himself, which are fine. I don't see any real problems with that. I'm not sure about the bridge. Apparently the bridge must have come loose or something. And I, I, I read it, but I didn't quite understand what he was saying about the bridge. Apparently there must be some sort of brace loose in this area, which I haven't looked inside yet. Uh, he thinks it may need a neck reset. He was concerned about this crack in the neck here too. Uh, he kind of mentioned most everything I talked about. It probably does need a neck reset, but maybe not though. This has got a really tall saddle on it. Maybe not. You know, I didn't I didn't really think about that. The, the saddle's really tall on this. We might be able to do a, a setup on this without doing much of anything other than fixing any loose bracing that might be inside it. I would much rather go that route on a guitar like this and uh, save the guy some money because if we have to take it all apart, uh, yeah, you're talking big bucks then. Actually, the bridge looks good. I, I don't see a problem with the bridge. Um, I'm going to try sliding this piece of paper under here. I don't think the bridge is loose. It looks like it's been loose before and somebody put it back on or something because there's a lot of damage in front and there's a lot of damage in the back. So I'm sure there's been something done to the bridge. I guess it's time to inspect the inside, see if we can figure out why there's such a hump right in here. 
So let me unstring this puppy and the problem with this through the bridge type th thing is I can't pull the pins out and take the strings off. You know, I have to undo it all up at the peg head and take it completely apart that way, which is way more work. This design is not that good if you want to have your instrument work done <laughs> because it's, it's going to cost you more money because it takes a lot longer to put the strings on, take a, you know, put them back on and check it and take them off and work on it and put them back on and check it. You, know, you can't just loosen them up and get them out of your way like you can with a, with a pinned bridge. So this is not good from a techie standpoint, if you will. But it is what it is, as I say, and we got to get to it. So here we go. Had a second thought, and that is I ought to at least uh, tune it up the pitch, double check it again, and see if I see any problems. Because they had it a couple of frets low on the pitch. Really didn't change too much, I don't think. But uh, here's kind of the before sound. Not too bad of a sound. To, to my ear, it's a little bit, um, I don't know, slightly muted type of sound. Got a very large neck. The uh, action is pretty high. Let's just go ahead and check it to see where it's at. But. I typically don't even bother checking them when they're this high, but let's see if we can get a measurement. About 120 thousandths on the big E. Um, the little E's not that terribly bad. The little E's right around 90. That's not too terribly bad on the little E. But on the big E, it's really high. But you know what? This saddle is really tall. I, heck, I don't think we're going to have to do a neck reset at all. I mean. Why would you do a neck reset if you can just adjust it with the saddle? That wouldn't make any sense to me. Well, let's get after it and see what we can find out when we get the strings off of it. Okay, I'm just going to show you a uh, techie tip here to save time. And that is, you know, I could loosen all these strings, undo all the unwindings and all that. But what I do is I just loosen all the strings so that there's not much tension on them. And then I just cut them off because it, it really is just, it's going to save the customer money in the long run. If I have to string it, unstring it a couple of times during the setup, well then that's going to add to the cost as well. But right now, even if these are new strings, it's cheaper just to cut them off of there. The uh, saddle, it's slightly loose. It's not, not real loose, but it definitely is put in at an angle. Uh, there's no question about that. It is at an angle. Okay, so now... You know, I could get the camera and put that all in there, but it's so much quicker and easier just to stick your mirror in there and see if there's a problem. And often that's all I need to do. Now this doesn't have two braces across the front here. Like the Martins, they'll have the tall brace through here and then they'll have a flatter brace through here. And this only has the taller brace. It doesn't have the flat brace. Okay, it is. I think it is loose at this end down here. Still not 100% sure, but I think it may be loose down here. Let me see if I can tell that with my hand. Well, honestly, I can't. Uh, let me see if I can get a razor blade to slide in under it or anything. Yeah, yeah, it slides in under it. So it's definitely loose at this end. Okay, so... We do know that brace is loose for sure. Unfortunately, that's not going to fix this big hump here in the middle. On the other hand, maybe we shouldn't fix this big hump in the middle because I think we can adjust the action perfectly with just this saddle. Okay, so that's the front of the top. Let me look at the rear of the top here. Okay, there used to be bolts through the bridge. He mentioned that in his letter. I, like I said, I didn't quite fully understand it. I think he must have replaced this bridge with a different bridge. I don't think he made it, though, based on the way what I'm seeing here. It looks like a factory-made bridge. Oh, I see another loose brace. There's another loose brace right here for sure. Actually, there's two of them. There's... Two braces come through here, 
and both of those are loose on this side. So all three braces so far are loose on this side. The three front braces are loose. There's two more back braces. I'm trying to see if they're loose. On this side, everything appears to be tight. So it's, it's like this lower half of the guitar is loose for some reason. Now let me look at the actual back braces on the back down in there. Oh, they're loose. This one's loose on the base side back here, the third one back from the sound hole. And the fourth one back is loose too. So the rear two, these rear two braces on the back are loose for sure. This brace that you can see through the sound hole is loose on that end for sure. And the reason I know that is I can see the light shining under it. Yeah, I can see light shining under all those braces back through there on this side. So we got lots of brace issues. Wow. That almost makes you feel like you need to take it apart to fix all the brace issues because there's so many of them. You know, honestly, on a guitar of this nature, and I, you know, I don't mean to put the guitar down because it's a decent guitar and it's got sentimental value is the main reason the customer wants it fixed. And he wanted to make it clear that this is not a budget fix. In other words, he, he'll spend whatever it takes to fix it. So, you know, he wants it fixed right. But, you know, I'm torn myself. I, if I can fix them through the sound hole, I much prefer to fix them through the sound hole because it saves lots of time, really. People say, just take the back off. Well, just take the back off ain't that easy because you're, you first of all got to get it all that binding loose and then you got to get the back off there. Then you got to put it all back together later. And just doing that often changes the neck angle. So, I mean, there's just all kinds of problems with that. It's just not the thing to do if you can avoid it. If you can fix them through the sound hole, you should fix them through the sound hole. The problem with this one is there are so many braces that need to be fixed through the sound hole. So I'm, I'm going to have to study it a little bit more here and decide how I want to approach it. My friends, as much as I hate it, I think I'm taking this thing apart. I, you know, there's so many braces loose that I can count in there. I think we're talking at least five or six that I can see that are loose. Who knows what I can't see. I hate to take it apart, I really do, because if it wasn't for the loose braces, I'm pretty sure I could set this thing up to play perfectly just as it is. But with that many loose braces, it's not easy to fix them through the sound hole. One or two through the sound hole is very doable, but five or six through the sound hole might be a bit much. Here I go, I'm gonna take it apart. Boy, I kinda wish I didn't have to do that. Well, you know, I made a big deal about how the back and top look like they might have been off once before, but after reading the customer's note, I'm pretty sure the customer just created that look, if you will, by the way he scraped the binding. You know, he didn't do a terrible job, just not a real good job, actually, uh, unfortunately. I don't honestly see a loose place anywhere to start. Everything looks tight, and, you know, anytime you got to take them apart, it seems like that's always the case. You don't get a break. I'm just taking a straight razor blade, just probing here along the binding, hoping that something's going to kind of come loose. This is where the seam is right here. That's why I'm starting right here. I'm just pushing right on the, between the binding and the, t the back there just to see if it'll break loose. And not so much luck on that. Quite honestly, I don't know if my hands are up to this. This one was requested that I do it. That's the reason I'm doing it. People are gonna say, well, have Caleb do that. Well, I would, except that the customer asked me to do this one. So, I'm trying. Yeah, I don't see anything loose. So, the next thing is, uh, how am I gonna get all this binding loose from this? Because it's really tight. I might, seriously, on this one, because of the kind of guitar it is, etc. You know, uh, some people will frown on this, but I'm tempted to actually saw it off. I've done it before. It wouldn't be my first rodeo. And if you do it well, it's 
the fastest, least destructive way to do it. And, you know, on a guitar like this. Now, I wouldn't necessarily do this on a high-end, expensive instrument, but on this guitar, and because of the story behind the guitar, this might be the best way. This is a razor saw. The, the, the kerf on this is just almost not anything. Let me see if I can give you a thickness measurement so you kind of get the understanding here that this is not going to make a big crack. I'm going to try to measure right across the teeth. That's only eight thousandths of an inch. That's approximately the thickness of two human hairs. So it's a very, very fine saw. The teeth on it are so tiny you probably can't see them. But they are there and you can feel them. And I'm tempted to, you know, I haven't made up my mind yet, but I'm just tempted to actually physically saw this off. That way the binding stays right on the back. I don't have to rebind it. I can put this top, you know, I can put the back right back on here, match it up the best I can. It's not matched up very well right now anyway because of the way he scuffed it up, you know. And, and I, I, don't mean, I don't mean to pick on the customer. That's not my point. But my point is there's already a lot of damage around this. I think I could saw it off and have no more damage than there is right now. I'm really leaning toward that because to take it apart the other way will take forever. Just run the bill up. Taking it apart this way could be fairly quick and uh, save him a lot of money. And I think the end, end product will be just as good. I've done a test sawing right through here. Can you even see it? My point is, I don't think you can. Right through here, I've started sawing. I'm, in, I'm already in about, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. Not quite that deep, probably. Problem is, I gotta get back in the, in the kerf again. There it is. So if you really take your time and saw this correctly, like the truth is you just really won't see a problem. See how that looks there? So that's the way I'm going to approach it. I'm not gonna film it all because uh, it's going to be boring as heck, just me doing this for an hour or so. But I still think that's way faster than anything else I could do. See, right there, I've already threw into the inside of the guitar now with the point. Once you get that started, then it's much faster too. So it's going to take me a little while to get good and started, but once I get that, I think I'll have this off of here in no time. The trick is to keep your saw right on the crack line where it, you know, where it does the least damage. Like I said, right there, I'm already through and I don't even think you can see it in the camera. So, and that's a close up, so there you go. That's the way I'm gonna approach it. We'll see how it goes. Just another quick screenshot. I've gotten quite a bit here. You can see how deep the saw is going in and uh, I've gotten up here further too, uh, and, and down around here. Um, but I just wanted to show you that and then show you what little minimal damage there is. In fact, this probably might be the best way to do even an expensive guitar because honestly, there's much less damage this way if, you, if you're careful. You know, it, it ain't gonna be 100% perfect by the time I'm done, you, there'll be some flaws, but considering all the other possibilities and the other way of doing it, there'll be flaws that way for sure too. So anyway, it's the way I chose to do it. I hope it's a good tip for somebody out there. It might help you. You know how I quite often modify tools? Well, that's what I'm doing here again. I'm using just the tip of this saw mostly and the problem with the tip is that this corner hits if you insert it very far. So the first thing I'm gonna do is file this corner off a little bit. In fact, I think I'll just take it to the sander and knock it off that way. I'm sure I could get it this way, but it's a little awkward. So I think I'll just take it to the sander, knock off some of this corner. I've taken it to the 
sander and put a nice long bevel on that. They're so tiny you can't really see them, but you can feel them pull in one direction and they don't pull so much in the other direction. I may have to get that under magnifier though to, to verify because I don't want to get it in wrong. It's just it's too hard to put it in and out. Got this little magnifier right here should tell me. Teeth are so tiny you really can't see them. Honestly, what I really need is a new blade because this is getting kind of dull. I can tell the teeth are not real sharp on this. So I guess I'm going to have to go online and see if I can find me a new blade for this. So what I'm going to do here is, in addition to filing that off, I'm also going to leave the blade extended just a little bit, which is kind of good and bad. It's, you can bend it by extending it like that. They're not meant to be extended out past this, but because I'm doing such delicate work, that just gives me a little more reach, and I need the reach, especially when I get around to these curved areas like this. Well, I'm moving at the blinding pace of probably about a millimeter every five or six strokes, so it won't take me but a couple hundred thousand strokes to get around this. It's actually going even better than I thought it would, honestly. It's really going very well. And the, that length and the bevel has really helped right here a lot. So that's working great. So I'm, I'm actually through from about here to about here now. And I've only been doing it a few minutes, really. The trick is you got to try to keep it straight. You don't want to let it start veering off to one side or the other. Just want to show you what a clean job this is doing. I'm sawed through from here all the way to about here. And seriously, can you even see a mark? If I was taking the binding off of there, you would see a lot more damage than just that. So and just to prove to you that I'm not faking it, there you go. And it's, it's loose. You can see I'm in there all the way down to way down here, see? So, and that's only, I don't know, uh, 25 minutes work, it looks like. And that's including talking to you guys. So there you go. Way faster than doing it the old fashioned way of taking everything apart. As I'm telling you this, I'm going to point the camera out the window because here we are at near the late part of April. And can you see the snow coming down out there? I don't know if you can or not. Can you see that? It's snowing out there. Crazy. Just a little bit further along. I'm, I'm from here to about here now. And so I've almost got one side off. And I I'm, I'm just thought I'd let you know, I'm hearing lots of creaking and cracking and popping. And I have a feeling that these, these sides are under stress. They're starting to push out a little bit right here, but maybe not as bad as the Gibsons. So it, I think it'll be able to be put back together, at least based on what I'm seeing right now. And once again, there's almost no damage at all this way. So the few of you out there that are yelling that I'm a hack, well, you know, I'd like to see you do one and, and do it on camera and do it with less damage than that. That's what I'd like to see. So if you're going to make that comment, put your money where your mouth is. I'm going to go to lunch. I got to run to town and take some deer antler to Ron so he can make some more deer antler saddles. Speaking of that, we always could use some deer antler. So if you have any spare deer antler hanging around, be sure to send them to us. We could sure use it. Just for the record, I'm pretty much from the tail block to the neck block on this one side. And on the time card here, that is uh, exactly 32 minutes. So that's pretty dang fast from you know all the way around there. You would not even get the binding off in 32 minutes. I guarantee you. As I work on sawing the back off this guitar, I hear the uh, weathermen are predicting snow. Here it is, April 20th, uh, 2021. It ain't gonna snow. What are they thinking?
well maybe it won't snow much well my friends the second side of the back here took me 14 minutes to get from the neck block to the tail block so 14 minutes the first one was a little longer about 30 minutes or a little longer but you know you kind of got to get your you know bearings established if you will and uh, I did that and so on the second one it went much faster okay so we got about 45 minutes roughly into the taking this back off so far it's still held together right here and right here and here's the negative of sawing it off at the binding line and that is that you're technically sawing through you know kind of the kerf on the inside you're really not sawing through at the exact seam and that's okay I'm okay with that you know sawing the kerf in half ain't gonna hurt a thing because uh, you can glue that right back together no problem in fact it gives you a big glue area so it's really pretty good the problem is that it doesn't line up with the neck block and the tail block so you've got issues if you will all right so the way i'm going to approach that is i'm going to heat up a knife and try to come in from this side and try to uh pry the neck block loose from the back from the inside through the sound hole once i get that then i have it all the way around to the back and i might be able to reach in uh, you know through the sides or through the through the sound hole whatever to get to that back scene it'll give me a little more room so that's the plan let's see if the plan sort of works got my little heater oven uh, knife oven here um, heating up and um, got these I've got three different blades in there I'm gonna see if I can get one of them to start under here it's not gonna be easy because there's a brace in the way Not making much progress that way yet. If I make some progress, I'll show you what's going on. I made a new tool. I took an old, old, really old putty knife, very thick steel heavy blade. I bent the end of it just slightly as you can possibly see there. The tip is bent up. That helps me hit the angle under there and I can tap it with a, with a hammer here. I'm heating it up <coughs> presently in the, the, the knife oven. And I'm about ready to give it a try. It's pretty warm. But this steel, I gotta tell you, is super hard steel. I don't know where it came from, but to say they don't make steel like that anymore is an understatement. I'm, I had it glowing red hot and I could barely bend it with a hammer. I've never seen anything like it. As thin as that steel is, typically anything like this that's thin and you get it red hot, you could bend it like a paper clip or easier. And this, I was hitting it with a hammer and was barely making a dent. I'm, I've never seen anything like that. But that means it's really hard and stiff, and that's kind of what I need right here, so I'm hoping it's going to work. So I'm going to lay it in on that seam. I'm going to tap it here with this plastic hammer to see if it starts to break anything loose. I'm not going to hit it real hard or go crazy with it. I'm just going to try to force its way into that seam and pop that seam open. That seems to be actually working. It's, it's going in there. I'm going to look on the back to make sure I'm not doing any damage. So far I don't see anything. These spots and all that were already there. They're all over the place as you can see. And in fact they're all over here too. So that's got nothing to do. There's no damage that I can see visibly so far. So I'm gonna keep trying this a little bit. That little bit of a curve sure does make a, a big difference on trying to slide it in there. I see something here, but I kind of think that was already there. It doesn't look like that would have anything to do with what I'm doing on this edge, but it might. I don't know. I better walk, keep my eye on that.
In the past, I've actually sawn, sawn right straight through all of that, but I was trying to avoid that this time. I may just have to do that. Yeah, it's, I'm starting to see a little problem here now. So, this isn't working. It's not a big deal right now, but I, I'm gonna quit because that doesn't seem to be working. So, I guess I'm gonna go back to the saw and just go ahead and saw through that one. And we'll see how it works. Well, I did get the back uh, loose from the neck heel. It did create a little crack right here, a little problem area, but it's, pretty small and can be fixed fairly easily. I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. A little bit of the binding did come loose right here, which, you know, is not a horrible thing either. Now that gives me a lot more room to get in there, but on the other hand, I still don't have as much room as I was hoping for. Would you not know, now all of a sudden the binding is loose right here too, which none of that binding, I couldn't stick a, you know, a razor blade in anywhere before, and it's just insulting me, that's all it's doing. Wish I had a good way of getting into that seam and popping that seam loose without sawing it. I, you know, this side here sawed really nice though. I mean, if you look at it, you can see it. It's pretty smooth, pretty easy. Won't take much to fix that. So I may just have to try to saw this back here too. The only problem is I can't tell, I don't have a hole to look through back here to see if I'm even close to the seam. And that's, so you're doing it all blind. I'm afraid doing it blind might create a problem. And the binding cracked right there too, so that didn't help nothing. So maybe that's the way I'll have to saw it, is to saw it from the outside and just keep working my way in. That seems to be the least dangerous way back here. And even though that won't really be in the seam either, that will be sawing the block in two, but you can always glue it back. It's not that big a deal. So I'll show you what it looks like when I get her apart. Well, I've sawed to the depth of my saw, as you can see, and it's still not popping loose yet. I ask, now what do I do? <laughs> I didn't think that would be a problem. I thought once, once I got that deep, it would just pop loose. But not so much. That must be one thick block. I'm gonna try sliding the blade back out again. Um, Problem is the blade keeps sliding back into place because of the pressure. Well, this is fight me all the way. I have the blade extended out to give me more depth, but that's very flimsy because you're talking eight thousandths of an inch thick, so it's not much of a blade. But I've got it in there. I know it's got to be sticking through, but for some reason it's not letting this thing turn loose. That's gotta be really close to coming loose. There it is. I think it's loose. Whew. You can see it didn't saw perfectly smooth and didn't saw perfectly smooth there either but that doesn't matter because it matches right back up and you can glue it back together. I'm good with that. And I'm glad I also took it apart because look at the messes that are in there from previous attempts to try to fix it. You know, it just needed to come apart to fix it right. And while we got it apart, I might just go rambunctious on it and put a decent bridge plate in there. Oh my goodness, that was easy. But see, all these braces back here are loose. This is loose, this is loose. I don't know about that one, but those two are definitely loose. These two are loose. 
And I thought I saw something else loose back here, but maybe that was on the top. I don't know. But there's all kinds of loose braces in here. The top is loose on the on this side here and here and here. These three are loose. So there's plenty to fix, and it'll be much easier to fix now. Oh my goodness, I'll take a little break. Regarding this big hump that I saw in the top here in this low spot, it's got all to do with this brace here. This brace is loose, you know, pretty much, you can probably see it moving there. It's, I can see it moving all the way to about here. So, you know, two thirds of it's loose. And that's where that neck is pulling, you know, up and everything. And it's got too much pressure on this. So what we're gonna do, I think I'm gonna take this brace completely out put it back in and I'm also going to put another flat brace across here just like they do on a Martin or you know another type of uh, higher end guitar like a Gibson or something but I'm just gonna see I think I can just wiggle this and break it break it out of there because yeah there you go so there it that one's out of there and uh, that gives me room to clean it up better and fix it right this has been glued with, I believe, epoxy. I don't know that for sure, but because there's so many different kinds of epoxies, but it it's a very hard, resinous looking type glue. I'm fairly certain that's not hide glue, and I'm fairly certain that's not tight bond. Let's put it that way. So what does that leave? Epoxy? <laughs> that's kind of what it leaves. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can bust it out of there. Yeah, it's hard and brittle, kind of like peanut uh, brittle. Let's see if I can't get all that epoxy junk out of there, whatever that stuff is. There's the best look I can give you at what that looks like. Kind of looks like a clear peanut butter or something. I mean, it's really caramel yeah maybe a melted caramel that's gotten rock hard yeah it's kind of messed up this these braces are loose to the center I can see so from from here to the center they're loose um, I may pop them out too and only get one chance at this so we might as well do it right I think I've already saved the customer some money on the taking it apart here, so, you know, spending the money where it counts, I think, is a good idea, and that's where we'll, we'll try to spend it, is here on this top and rebracing it and doing it right, because it's not very good right now. Thank goodness for my crazy sharp chisels, because I'm able to just go in here more or less and, and just get right under the, uh, this epoxy stuff without hardly removing any wood and just shaving it right off. Do yourself a favor. More importantly, do me or the next guy that works on your guitar a favor. And do not ever, and I repeat ever, in big, giant, bold, capital letters, put epoxy in your acoustic guitar. It is not good for anything in your acoustic guitar. All right, if you have an ovation where you're gluing that plastic body to the top, I know they use epoxy there, but on a standard acoustic instrument, do not ever put epoxy in it. The only place you'll ever see me use epoxy is for filling a hole, just a big open gaping hole. It works great for that kind of thing, but otherwise, don't use it. Don't use it to glue a brace. Don't use it to glue, you know, your sides back or anything like that. All it does is create problems like this and it never holds. I mean, these braces are not held in place by the epoxy. It gave loose, but yet the epoxy has to be busted out of here. So, I can't honestly say that enough. Don't use epoxy on an acoustic guitar. That's what I'm doing is I'm just 
taking it back to bare wood, so it'll take me a little while to do that. I'll show you what it looks like when I get her cleaned up. For those of you who have seen my videos on the Regal Wreck restoration, it's a, it, that's a pretty good video series. You might want to check it out. But I was sitting here thinking out loud that I should probably call this Regal Wreck 2 Deja Vu all over again. Because that's kind of what we're dealing with here. It's kind of a... It's not as bad as that first Regal was in terms of damage and everything. Because it doesn't have that gigantic hole through the top. But on the other hand, this one's got epoxy in here and it's a mess and all the braces are loose. And it's not simple you know if if I was at the point where the person was going to put this glue in here I would probably give him a hundred dollars to not put the glue in there that's how bad this stuff is to deal with very hard to get out were it not for these very, very sharp chisels, I don't think I could get it out. Because essentially you just have to cut the wood and, and just chisel under the glue just slightly. But we'll get there eventually. I might add that some folks might argue that I ought to put X bracing in this and change it while I've got everything ready to go, but keep in mind this top really from the sound hole back is perfectly flat. It's lasted this long. I don't see any point in reinventing the wheel. This is the way it came from the factory. I don't see any reason to change it. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the braces back in as they are. The only thing I'm going to change is the uh, bridge plate and that will uh, only help the sound and the strength. So I'm going to do that, but otherwise I'm going to leave it as is. I thought I'd show you that I, I'm taking a single edge razor blade and I'm scraping the top pretty much all over just to get rid of anything loose and get rid of the little fuzzies where the braces pulled up. That way, I'm just doing them all and that way I can vacuum at one time and put all the braces in and we'll be ready to go. I may add a new brace up here because like I said there was that hump and uh, the top is actually cracked right here because there was not enough brace support up in the neck area. So I probably will add a brace here. I think that ought to do it. Well, there is a look at what it looks like uh, as I put the braces all back. Those are all the ones that came from the factory. I'm noticing right here that there's not any glue squeeze out, and this is where that hump was. So I think I'm gonna find a clamp that I can get in here and squeeze this together right there. It's gonna be a little difficult to do, but I've gotta find a way to do it. So I'll show you what that looks like when I figure it out. So the way I solve this problem right here is I put a little wedge under this. That the fretboard end is right there, by the way. So you, so I'm sliding that wedge under the fretboard end, and uh, you know that lifts the fretboard back up to the brace. And now I have squeeze out there, so I think that worked just fine. Well, the go bar system takes up a lot of real estate on my desk but uh, my workbench, but I have got a piece made. Now this is quarter sawn spruce and it's quarter sawn where the, you know, the grain lines are going perpendicular to the top there. And uh, this is the kind of brace that they would typically put uh, up next to the neck block, like in a Martin guitar or whatever. So I'm going to uh, now round it off, uh, round, I, it's, just presently flat and parallel. But I'm gonna round off the edges to make it look like it was at least thought about rather than just uh, picked up off the wood pile and glued in. It's always good to make something look like it was done with forethought rather than uh, something that you might see uh, as an episode from the old Junk, junkyard Wars program, you know. 
Does anybody remember that program, Junkyard Wars? That was one of my favorite programs. I always thought I would have excelled in that program. That was quite a TV show. But most of the junk was planted, so, you know. What's really sad about that is I could probably uh, go out of here on my farm and find just about everything they had in that program. Except mine's nice and organized. Well, it's starting to look like somebody intended this to be a brace instead of just a piece of scrap wood. And then the ends are typically beveled down, so I'll do that. I have them curved to fit the curves inside the guitar. Uh, I think this will give it a lot more strength up in that area because that area I could tell from the very first moment I looked at it that that area was in a world of hurt. The only thing I'm concerned about is by strengthening this, I hope I don't change the neck angle too much. Um, or if I do, I hope I change it in a good way. But either way, I think it needs to be done and we'll address the neck angle once we start putting it back together. Looks fairly intentional now. It's almost smooth enough where I don't need any sandpaper, but I'll sand it just a little bit to get rid of any, the saw marks and things. So that looks looks pretty good. We'll um, slide this back over here where you can see what I'm working on. Don't know if you can really see the area it goes into or not, but it goes in right up here on this front area here. You really can't see it, I don't think, but I'll show it to you once it's all finished. That looks like that's gonna work real good. Gotta get some glue on it, there's a bunch of braces. Trying to give you a look at this brace that I put down in here, but I really can't get the camera where you can see it. It's it, I'll just have to wait until it's all dried up and let you see it that way, but uh, I think I've got it pressed in there pretty well. It seems to have flattened that area some. It's really hard to tell because it's just hard to see. It's even hard for me to see. But I did drive that wedge under there a little bit further also just to make sure that it's got plenty of pressure there. So I think we're good. Now that I have that top over there incubating, uh, in with all the braces glued in. I think I better figure out a way to tear this apart because it's in pretty bad shape. Every, Like I said, every brace on this thing's got some problem. One of the biggest problems is that they've, you know, they've got these braces in under the kerf again, which is fine. I mean, that's the way most manufacturers do it. I don't do it that way when I build mine. I, I don't see any advantage to it and it just creates problems when you gotta work on them later. So I'm gonna have to cut the ends on all of these braces in order to get them out. On a case like this, this is where the scalpel handle actually is good because you can put a lot of pressure down. Where the X-Acto handle blade, using it with the scalpel, is just handier for detail work. It's, uh, but this is good for when pressure needs to be applied. I think I'll go through and cut the glue line first. Maybe that just this glue line is the only thing holding it. There's a lot of glue squeeze out, as you can probably see. And I'm breaking that off. As soon as I get the glue broke off on the edge, it seems like it's popping right up. 
Yep, this end popped up already. Now it's only held right in the very middle. Again, you can see the overspray where they didn't bother to uh, mask it off or anything when they sprayed the instrument. They sprayed right through the sound hole and it all sprayed in here. Sometimes <clears throat> your easiest way to do something like this is to just give it a little shock and just tap it a little bit. Because this glue is so brittle. Almost worked. It's pretty loose. Right there is where it's stuck. Just a little bitty spot, about an inch long right here is where it's stuck, right in this spot. Otherwise, it's pretty much loose. There it is. You can see right there, just that one little inch spot right there. And uh, it, that's actually the brace that came, stayed stuck there. But uh, that's not a big deal. It's a very minimal amount. It's just paper thin. You can see it's already gone. Most of it's gone anyway. I think before I get confused and accidentally turn one of them around, I think I'll just write B on this end of all of them. And that'll just stand for the base side of the uh, back. And that way I know they all go to the, the base side of the we we'll go ahead and just take them all out, I think. You know, it's sad to take them all out when they're not all bad. Actually, this one here, I'm not seeing my problem with it now. Right here, I think it's got a little loose spot right there. Otherwise, it's pretty good. It's, it's loose right there, but not real bad loose. It's loose on the end here, too, I think. But that's probably from the factory. I don't think they ever got that glued. I don't think that came loose. I don't think they, I just don't think they had it glued. Once I get all the glue squeeze out off, I'll be able to tell if it's loose. It's really hard to tell right now. There's a, look at here's glue squeezed down, ran all the way down here. I don't see a problem with that one really. Just this one little area and I can easily get some glue in there if, if it's even that loose. It's, I can start something under there but I can't really get it to go. I always say if it ain't broke don't fix it. So we'll just put some glue here. I'm just going to put a little pencil mark there just to kind of remind me I'll put an arrow. This one's pretty loose. This one's got to come out. Sadly, this one's only loose on the one end, too, but I think it needs to come out anyway because it's pretty, pretty loose and pretty deformed on this one end. I imagine by the time I get all the glue broke loose, it'll come out of there. Some people can get the wrong impression that I'm being, you know, um, awkward or whatever with this but you know you know what you can get away with when you've done this for a long time and and I know how hard I can push and and I know what the tools are going to do anyway you got to take that into consideration because it probably looks fairly crude through the video but you got to use a certain amount of force. Anytime you're taking something apart on an instrument, it is a destructive process, period. There's nothing you can do about that. It's going to be destructive. You learn how much you can get away with and what you can fix and the time you can save by just forcing it sometimes. And then the problems you can cause by forcing it sometimes. So you got to get away all that out. It's pretty much loose, except for, again, one little spot is the only place holding on this. Again, you can sometimes shock it into complying. 
there it is. Just popped it loose and it left a paper thin little section right there. That was just about a two inch section was all that was really holding that. As you can see, it wasn't held anywhere else. This back brace, I'm gonna reassess it. Yeah, I think it needs to come out too. It's, it's loose this far and if it's loose that far, it's probably loose everywhere. This is the only brace that's really not loose. And so I'm gonna leave it in. This one up here may not have to come out either. It's only loose right there that I can see, I think. No, maybe more. Yeah, it's loose here too. So this one's gonna come out too. So we're gonna take out both of these. It's already loose, you can see how far it's loose. Somebody might ask, well, why didn't this stick along here? My guess is they probably didn't clamp it all that well. You know, if you don't clamp them really, really well, you won't, glue just won't stick on its own. You gotta clamp the tar out of it. And some people will argue and say that they squeezed all the glue out. Well, that's never been the case for me. I've squeezed them as tight as I can squeeze them, and when you take it apart, there's always glue there. You can't squeeze all the glue out, at least that's my opinion. But if you don't squeeze it tight enough, the glue will not make a good bond from one piece of wood to the other. Because glue by itself is not very strong. It's that bond between the two pieces of wood that makes the difference. And I don't know chemically and physically how all that works. I, I don't even pretend to know. But I do know if you don't clamp it really tight, it won't hold. This one's kind of loose, but not too loose, so I'm going to just see if it'll persuade. I'm not hitting it as hard as it might look either, by the way. I'm just tapping it kind of lightly, and this is a plastic hammer. The bond on this may be a little better. Through here, it looks like it probably is, but from here back, it's, it's not bonded at all from here back. So what we may have to do on this one, rather than breaking it, because it does look solid here, it really does. So maybe rather than taking it all the way off, I'll just put the glue under here, clamp it down real good. That might be the best approach on this one. Sometimes you gotta vary your approach, depending on what you run into. I don't want anything to be in my way when I glue it back. I think you can see where the customer has fixed these cracks here, and I it looks like he fixed them with CA glue by, based on the penetration there, which is perfectly acceptable. I hold it up and I look under it, and I look for you know a good connection, and it does look like it's going to be a good connection, so I don't see a real problem. I think we're fine. I don't think we need to take the rest of this one apart. So we've got glue to put under here, glue to put under here, and maybe glue here. I'm going to look at this one now too and see how bad it is. I think this end down here looks like it's flexing slightly. It is, I'm pretty sure. So I think we're going to at least cut it loose from here and see how bad it is. Now it's definitely loose back to here at least and it's loose right here so I don't know how much more is loose. I'm going to get rid of all the squeeze out and see because honestly the squeeze out keeps it from flexing and you can't really tell how how bad it is until you get rid of all that squeeze out buildup on the edges. Yeah, this one's going to come loose here all the way across, I think. Once I get all this out of here, I can tell it's pretty loose. Yeah, it's loose. So this one's coming out. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to come out. So I got to cut this end here. Pretty sure this one will pop off. Yeah, it was only held in that one little spot again, you can see. 
The rest of that wasn't even held at all. It's just not even glued, really. I mean, it's there was glue under there, but it they, the two pieces didn't bond at all. As far as I can tell, the rest of it is bonded, except for where I've pointed out. Okay, so I'm gonna do some cleanup, again, with the razor blade and clean up everything, kinda like this. I'm not gonna show all of that, but I'll get it all cleaned up, and uh, when I'm ready to start putting it all back together, I'll show you what that looks like.